Hi everybody, welcome to the uh, Executive Keto Chef, I'm Gary Trahey, and I want to talk about what I call Kitchen 101, and that is mise en place. It means a place for everything and everything in its place. And uh, you talk to a lot of people, especially people who don't like to cook, because of the fact that there's just they're just not comfortable in a kitchen. Um, I've trained actual cooks who weren't comfortable in a kitchen and they worked for me and it was really quite an unusual thing. So uh, what I want to be able to do is go through with you what I call mise en place. And we're going to be doing some demonstrations. We have different things, uh, some chickens and how we're going to be able to do that. Um, it, it's getting yourself organized and it's being able to approach what you're doing, what you're cooking and being organized in your own head. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. Um, and I'm just going to kind of, kind of demo that for you. Do you ever go to the grocery store and you buy a big package of chicken breast because it's on sale? Well, folks, that's what happened to me. I went to the grocery store and last night, because I go to the grocery store almost every day, and I bought chicken breast. And they were actually nice big pieces of chicken breast, really, really, really good. And, and I said, you know something, I am going to buy those. And as soon as I buy them, I automatically have my plan in place. And what I do is I can actually do it right in this bag, is I take my chicken after I wash it, because I always wash my chicken. You should always wash all your chicken, okay? Is I take the chicken, I put it in a Ziploc bag. I don't seal it, but I just keep it in a Ziploc bag. Ziploc is very high quality, I really love the product, and I get my mallet. Because of the fact, in case you notice something about the chicken, I want you to look at it from this angle. This is very thin over here, and this side, the upper lobe, is very, very thick. What I want to try to do is I want to try to get it balanced out. And I'm going to marinate them. So all I do is I just basically just pound it. And, and I'm not going to pound it thin, and I'm not going to get it as thin as this side over here. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to thin it out. And notice, it becomes really, really huge. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. And now look at that. You have a piece of chicken that now literally fits the whole entire bag, and it's pretty consistent on its thickness. Now what I'm going to do is I take that chicken and I'm going to start marinating. I have two bags of boneless chicken because it came with six. And then today when I went to the grocery store, I found these beautiful big chicken breasts. They're bone and chicken that we're going to use tonight for Greek chicken. And because we're going to do a show on just all these different kinds of dishes and stuff like that. Now folks, let me tell you something. You can do this with pork. You can get a pork, uh, just you can get sliced pork loin, or you can get a pork loin where you get a big pork loin and you want to cut it into pieces, and or you get a big pork loin and you want to keep it whole. Get it in a bag and marinate it, or you can even brine it. We're going to do a show on brining meats, and that'll be coming up at another time. But what I do when I grab my chicken, and this is what I do, I think about this. I bought a package of chicken. I've got guests coming in on, let's say, next Friday night. So what I'm going to do is this is what I do. And if I have like six or seven guests and I'm going to use the whole package of chicken, I'll put it in my one gallon bag of, of um, uh, my one gallon Ziploc bag. I open up all my bags and I pour in. And this is um, the liquid coconut oil. I don't use very much, very, very little. But I'm also going to do this because I love the flavor. I'm going to use extra virgin olive oil, and I'm going to use it just a little bit because I want the flavor. And because the flavor, flavor for me is essential. So as you can see, I have all three of my bags set up right there. Then what I do is I always grab some salt. I put some salt in the bag. And then, because these are your these are your staples, and I'm going to throw in some fresh ground pepper. I'm 
in there, and this is going to add a lot of flavor. Now from here, what I decide to do is I decide what do I want to what do I want to make. So let's say I have three bags here. I can make different flavored chicken. I can make a barbecue chicken. You when we make our own barbecue sauce from the from the keto the keto recipes. Once I actually figure it out, um, we're going to be able to do that. But until that time, if you want to do barbecue, go use your bottled barbecue sauce. Yeah, it has some sugar in it. But if you want to do that and you're craving barbecue and you need it for Wednesday night, then go ahead and use it. Okay? This is something for you to learn about prep. Okay? So I'm going to also use my granulated garlic. Granulated garlic goes in each one. I put a good amount in there. And then I'm going to take, um, and let's say we're going to do Italian, okay? So I have some basil, and this is just dried basil, okay? This one's going to be my Italian bag. I throw some dried basil in there, okay? Very, very nice. And then also what I'm going to throw in there is I'm going to throw some restaurant, some red pepper flakes. I have some wonderful um, fennel seed. I'm going to throw some fennel seed in there. Uh, and then I have, um, I have some rosemary. And what I can do is I have some fresh rosemary. I can take a rosemary sprig. I can just kind of break it up just like that. Throw that in there. And then what I can also do, because I'm doing Italian, I love this, bals uh, it's a balsamic vinegar. Oh my God. I absolutely love balsamic. On this, uh, and when, when I've marinated things in the past, I've generally always put something uh, with citrus or with vinegar acid, in. An acid. Acid, yeah, to You're open up acid. the boards. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, perfectly. Okay, so now, this is my Italian bag. I seal it down. I've got something in the way, something's blocking it. I think it's a piece of something, okay? So I got that there. It's sealed, and then all I do, folks, is I take my, my bag, and I just start moving it around, so that way I can distribute all those spices that are in there, distribute the vinegar, distribute the oil, and get the uh, rosemary that's going to go through. It's going to season and flavor. That one's right. Now over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one with a little bit of a Mexican flair. I already have my garlic, my salt, and my pepper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fresh cilantro. Again, that's and coriander in the UK. Guys. Coriander in the UK. And I'm not even, notice I'm not even really chopping it up. I'm just throwing it in there. Okay? I have some wonderful cumin or cumino, depending on where you're from. And I'm going to throw some cumin spice in there. And put that right in there. Then I also have a lime that I've got. I'm going to take that. And I'm going to squeeze some fresh lime in there. Is there a reason yesterday we did with the heating up the lemon? Yes, I did. Is? Yeah. And so what I did is just before we went on and we started filming, I threw one of the limes in the, in the microwave. Ah, I've already done it. Okay. I've already done it. I threw it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. And what it does is it takes a very hard lime. It completely softens it up and you get far more juice out of it. So I'm going to squeeze in all of my juice that I can. And then I'm going to throw my lime skins right in there. I'm going to let the limes just stay right in there. That one's done. And I'm going to move this one around. This one's a little bit tighter, but that's okay. And the flavors are going to automatically get sent through. And you're going to have all that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful flavor going through. So what I, what I can do is I can take these. I may not need them for a week. If I don't have anything going on and chicken's on sale, I can make this up for two weeks in advance if I want. I'm going to put it right in my freezer, and I'm going to let it get done. Here's a nice big package. 
Do you this, date? Do you date label it, or does it not matter? Well, no. If it's for yourself in, in a restaurant, yes, you can do it for yourself and label it. I know everything that's going on in my freezer. Okay. This is one that I have marinated. This is a lemon. This is a lemon uh, pepper. This is a really nice one. Chicken went on sale a little while back. So anything that goes on sale, I always do something with it, and it's marinated. This one's for tonight. This is going to be for Greek. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my oil, put that there. I'm going to do this one, put that right in there. Olive oil. I'm going to take some wonderful, wonderful um, garlic, the granulated garlic that I use. Put that there. I've got some black pepper. Now I could have done this yesterday or, or whatever, but when I saw it go on sale today, I immediately jumped on it. This is some um, um, mint, uh, dried mint that I have. I absolutely love it. So incredibly aromatic. Oh. And, and so what I do is I throw in a nice big pinch of that because you can't do uh, Greek without doing um, some fresh mint in there. I'm also going to throw in some red pepper. And so you can't do Greek without fresh mint. Okay. Uh, well, it's not without, without, in mind. without mint. You got to have mint, especially if you're going to do a marinade. Okay. Next time I'm we'll also going to throw a little bit of fennel in. I'm going to throw some fennel in there because I absolutely love it. And we have the garlic. We have that. And you know what? Why not? Let's throw a little bit of rosemary in there. I'm going to actually peel this one off because of the fact that this one's not getting frozen. It's going to be used up tonight, so I want to get all that flavor distributed as fast as I can. So, and this one's just going to go in the refrigerator for later. And so that's all I'm going to do for the one for tonight. And for my acid that I'm going to use, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a little bit. I'm not going to add a lot, but I'm going to go back to the balsamic and add just a little bit of balsamic to this one. And I'm just going to do that very, very little because I don't want to overpower it since I'm not going to be doing it the other way. Okay? And all I've done, I try to get as much air out of it as I can because if you're going to freeze it, you don't want to have really any air in it. Okay? So, and then, again, I take it, I toss my chicken around in it, maneuver it around, and it just, it's going to flavor so incredibly incredibly well that when we work on the Greek chicken later this is going to be absolutely you can even smell all the all the spices and herbs going through isn't that amazing I don't just smell it through the bag you can just smell it right through the bag and and look at that you've got beautiful marinating ch uh, chicken breast that's going to be for a Greek chicken tonight it's got extra virgin olive oil coconut oil balsamic fresh uh, wonderful herbs and folks you can do this three or four days in advance. If you turn around and say, what's my time frame on this? Can I marinate the chicken? If I'm gonna do, you know, do I have to do it 24 hours in advance? Folks, what I used to do is I used to do a minimum when I marinate a chicken for any of the hotels I worked for, is I would do a minimum, a minimum three day marinade, okay? So I would marinate my, my chickens up to four or five days and just keep them in the refrigerator. I would do it like that. If I'm going to go at the end of the week or something like that, and I'm going to, I can freeze it right in the marinade, pull it out the day before, and just let it let let, let it thaw. If you need to, or unexpected guests come over, you all of a sudden you get unexpected people coming for dinner. You grab, make let's make believe this is frozen. Keep it frozen. Get your sink. Put some cold water in here, cool water, and you can get it thawed out really, really fast. It's a fast way of cooling something down. Get it in and let it let let the let the water just uh, run over it. It'll be really really fast, and then you can get it. Is baked that up. flowing water or just sitting in water? Well, this considering the fact that if you can't really have a flowing water mm. unless you have a really good drip drain, well, I'm you just can also do one thinking you can, it's in California. plastic. It's in plastic, yeah. so it doesn't have to be have to be do that. Ideally, if you're in a hotel or you're in a restaurant. You have to have a flowing drain going on. If you're in your house, the labor board's not going to come in and shut you down because you're doing the chicken that way. Okay. So, um, but you don't want to do it overnight. You only want to be able to do it if you need something done quicker. Okay. So this is going to be used for tonight. This is going to be used for tonight. Um, and then we have stuff. And I've got, 
a bunch of chicken in the freezer. So when I need it, all I need to do is just pull it out. And that's all part of the mise en place. You can do that with certain sliced meats. You can do it with pork. You, folks, just so you know, I buy, when I buy salmon, I get it down to the portion size. I usually buy a full side. We'll have a, we'll have, we'll have a couple shows just on salmon with different things you can do just with salmon. And um, I'll show you the, the, the easiest way to do salmon that's going to be the least expensive for you. Okay? Um, so I even take salmon and I marinate my salmon the exact same way. Not with vinegar, of course, but I use citruses. And I'll do that 24 hours in advance. And I keep it right in the refrigerator and grill it. You can saute it. You can do anything you want. And it is going to be the moistest salmon you've ever, ever had. So we're going to go through seafood on that too. I do it with shrimp. You can do you can do this method with anything. Get your bags ready. Get everything ready. You know you're going to have something going on for the weekend. Big family event. Get it done in advance. That way, when right before the guests come, you're not running around. You can enjoy yourself. Okay. Thank right. you. Thanks, Gary. That's you know that's really. Uh... One quick question, when sure. you're, you're, you're uh, thawing it out in the water, how long do you expect, let's say, two chicken breasts to take to thaw out? It, it really depends. I don't usually do two chicken breasts. I can't really answer that question because of the fact that I'm used to doing 150. Right. Um, so doing two chicken breasts, if you're doing it in, in, in cool water, not necessarily cold water, in cool water, you can give it, a, give it a couple hours. Okay. Okay. I guess the other thing there is the fact that when it's uh, when it's hammered flatter, it will thaw out faster. Not necessarily because of the fact you're putting it together. It's combining amounts of meat that are that are frozen together. That really doesn't unless oh, okay. you're unless you did them flat flatter yeah. separately in, in a in a bag. Ah, right, got you, like got you, got it's you. It's just a big mass. Cool. All okay. right. Thanks very much from Wine Country, California, guys. Uh, if you like this, this was great information. So. And we're going to be doing little tips here every once in a while here and there. So, if you think this information is useful, please share it out there. It, I, I found this one incredibly handy. Uh, I know a lot of people that do uh, the food prep on a Sunday uh, for training or whatever it may be. This is a, this is a gold mine. So guys, if you like it, like the page, invite to the page, uh, there'll be more to come. Thanks very much from Southern California, where there's a water shortage. That's why I was asking about running water. Oh, okay. Yeah.